Hi, and welcome back. So a study out of America has shown that when consuming alcohol, one specific group of adults do not age as quickly as the others. That's enough waffling off me. Let's jump in and see what group I belong to, and let's see what group you belong to also. So this video is gonna be a review of a piece I read that was penned by Akadi Mazin, where he covers a study that was published in the journal Aging that looked into alcohol consumption in three distinct age groups and how in one, alcohol consumption had no effect whatsoever on biological aging. And there are links in the description below to the studies and to the articles I used to put this presentation together. It is common knowledge that excessive drinking can be quite harmful, but previous research has suggested a horseshoe-like relationship with moderate drinking being associated with better health than the two extremes, and those being abstinence and alcohol abuse. Newer studies, however, have put this settled conclusion into doubt, and as a result, more research is needed if this debate is to be settled once and for all. Epigenetic clocks appeared around a decade ago and have earned a solid reputation as a sound way to measure biological age. In this new study that was published in the journal Aging, the researchers used two robust second generation epigenetic clocks, those being the Grim Age clock and the Pheno Age clock, to assess the impact of drinking on biological age acceleration. That's the difference between a person's biological age and also their chronological age. Let's take a look at the cohort. The researchers analyzed drinking patterns of 3,823 participants of the Framingham Heart Study. The cohort was stratified by age, young, 24 to 44 years of age, middle-aged, 45 to 64, which is where I sit, and the older, which was 65 to 92. They were also categorized by their self-reported levels of alcohol consumption. So for those that don't know, the Framingham Heart Study is a long-term ongoing cardiovascular cohort study of the residents in the city of Framingham, Massachusetts. The study began back in 1948 with 5,209 adult subjects from Framingham and is now on a third generation of participants. It's a project of the National Heart, Lung and Blood Institute in collaboration with, since 1971, the Boston University. So for the study, the light drinkers consume less than one drink per day for women and less than two drinks per day for men. At-risk drinkers consumed between one and two drinks a day for women and between two and three drinks a day for men. The heavy drinkers were those who consume more than two drinks per day for women and more than three drinks a day for men. I sit in the light drinkers category. Which category do you fall into? Interestingly, the older people, those aged between 65 and 92, seem to be more into their booze. Only 5.6% of this group were non-drinkers. That's about twice as few as were found in the other groups. Conversely, at-risk drinkers and heavy drinkers were much more prevalent in the older cohort, especially when compared to the young cohort, 11.8 and 2.3% for at-risk drinkers and 5.6 and 0.7% for heavy drinkers, respectively. Now, long-term alcohol consumption was pointedly associated with an increased biological age acceleration in the middle-aged and in the older cohorts, but not in the young cohort. According to the Pheno age clock, one additional drink a day increased the discrepancy between biological age and chronological age by 0.71 years in the middle-aged people and by 0.6 years in the older people. Now, the Grim Age clock returned slightly lower scores, but still highly significant effects, those being 0.43 years older in the middle-aged adults and 0.37 years older in the older adults. And the model was adjusted for sex, physical activity, educational level, body mass index, smoking, and obviously chronological age. Now, when the researchers ranked the results by different types of alcohol, hard liquor emerged as the most harmful type by far. The second place was fiercely contested by beer and wine. According to the Pheno age clock, shown here as PAA in red, wine was more strongly associated with age acceleration in the middle age participants than beer was. For Grim Age, shown here as GAA in blue, it was the other way around. So, so much for settling this argument once and for all. Also, white blood cell composition emerged as a potential confounding variable, 
When adjusted for it, civil associations became far more robust. In another interesting finding, recent binge drinking showed significant associations with epigenetic age acceleration. So sticking with binge drinking, middle age participants who reported recent binge drinking, that's defined as women consuming more than four drinks a day and men consuming more than five drinks a day or less than two alcohol free days per week had a 0.56 year increase for women. That's just over half a year and a 0.93 year increase for men in epigenetic age acceleration. And that was according to both the Grim Age and the pheno age clocks. So some agreement here between the clocks, binge drinking certainly does increase your biological age. As with all studies, there are some limitations that need to be considered. For example, this study only included European Americans, so its findings may not be generalized to other ethnic groups. The participants educational level was higher than the national average in America. Since higher education levels are generally associated with better health, this might have mitigated the effects of alcohol consumption, especially in the young cohort. And the researchers also noted that larger studies may be needed in the future to reveal if there is a true relationship between drinking and epigenetic age acceleration, especially in the younger group. So there's quite a lot of numbers there. In summary, while the research is ranked by different types of alcohol, hard liquor emerged as the most harmful type by far. Hard liquor is defined as hard liquor, also known as distilled alcoholic beverages, is a type of alcoholic drink with a higher alcoholic content than beer or wine. And it's produced through the distillation of grains, fruit or vegetables that have already been fermented. Also, long term average alcohol consumption was associated with increased biological age acceleration in those aged between 45 and 92. Light drinkers consume less than one drink per day for women and less than two drinks a day for men. At risk drinkers consume between one and two drinks a day for women and between two and three drinks a day for men. And the heavy drinkers consumed more than two drinks a day for women and more than three drinks a day for the men. Now, according to the pheno age clock, one additional drink a day to these numbers increased the discrepancy between biological and chronological age by 0.71 years in middle-aged people and by 0.6 years in the older people. The Grim Age clock showed a drop in chronological age of 0.43 years for middle-aged people and 0.37 years for the older people. The average of both clocks for those aged between 45 and 92 was a drop in chronological age of 0.52 years, so about six months. So I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. I'm in the middle age group, so it's, it's easy for me to find out where I rank in these uh, findings. It is an epidemiological study, so the findings will obviously be open to all kinds of biases. Uh, also in the study, no mention of alcoholic volume, not really a significant factor in hard liquor or wine, but in beer, there can be a large difference between the cheap brands and the boutique or the microbreweries. Some good quality beers can have the same alcohol content as some cheaper wines. 